right, this video is for number six through nine on the unit five test for you. So 6A says your grandparents give you a check for your birthday for $650, and you want to start saving money for a new laptop. You find a CD, which is a type of banking account called a certificate of deposit, and it earns 1.3% interest compounded quarterly. Okay. So this is important information. Also that you got $650. After eight years, how much money will you have? Okay, so we need to decide what model to use here. It's not on this screen, but it's compounded quarterly, if I go back here, is this guy. It has the funky looking fraction. So we need to fill in our information here to that formula. AST All right, let's figure out what we know. We want to know the amount in our account after eight years. So we're going to find the amount in our account after eight years equals P is the principal or the starting amount, which is $650 times one plus our interest rate is R, written as a decimal, and 1.3% is point, I'm going to save room, 0.013 over N, the number of compounds in the year for quarterly is four. And so then we go to the four times a year column. And we're going to simply type that into our calculator, which is right here. It's at 650. One plus, you can make the fraction if you want, or you can just type in the numbers. It should all work out either way. And I'm going to go to two decimal places because this is money. In eight years, you'll have seven hundred twenty-one dollars and twelve cents. Okay, so now the question is: Determine algebraically how long <coughs> it will take that six hundred fifty dollars to double. Now, the double of six fifty is thirteen hundred dollars. Your goal is thirteen hundred dollars, right? And this is our original equation. Now this time I'm going to leave it as 4t because we want to know how long, what's the time until I get that $1,300. So I need to solve this exponential equation. I'm going to start by dividing by 650. I need to isolate my exponential, which means that I cannot use a logarithm or anything else until I get this whole thing by itself. That is an exponential um, expression. So I need to divide by 650. I get 2 equals that whole yucky fraction. Now, that obviously I cannot find a common base here. Do not simplify inside the parentheses. Go ahead and just take the log of both sides, the common log. When I take the common log on the right, that exponent comes down in front. Now here, I need to get t by itself, but move the log first. I always like to move the whole log together at one time. Get all the logs on the same side, then you can deal with the rest of the problem. And save room here to save myself some writing. Those logs are going to cancel off, so I'm just going to erase them since they're going to disappear. And I'll have 4t equals log of 2 over log of that parentheses. The last thing you're going to do before you type into your calculator is divide all of this by 4. Here is finally where you pull out your calculator. Don't type things into your calculator before this step. Now you're going to type log of 2, close your parentheses, divided by log of 1 plus 0 0.013 divided by 4. Now you're going to hit enter. This will be the final answer. I still have to divide all of that by 4, and you'll get 53.406 years. Okay, it's going to take 53.406 years until, if you use that bank account, you get $1,300, which seems like a really long time. You're going to be in your 60s. All right, let's look at number 7. You don't want to wait till you're in your 60s or 50 years old, even. You don't want to wait till then to buy your new laptop. So you sign up for a credit card. Now this credit card charges 19% interest compounded monthly. And to buy your laptop, you charge $1,100 on that credit card. 
You make no payments because you don't have any money uh, on this debt for three years. How much will you owe your credit card company if you do that? All right, so this is the same formula because we are compounded at a set interval, which is monthly. So when I set this up, I want to know the amount in my as my balance after three years. I started by charging $1,100, and interest is compounded at 19% monthly, so 12 times a year. I have 12 times a year for three years. And I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to type this into my calculator. So I'll have 1100 1 plus 0.19 divided by 12. And that means if you do not pay off your credit card in three years, you're going to go oh, almost $2,000, $1,936.43. Okay, so that's what you'll owe in three years if you don't pay off your credit card. Now, suppose you still don't pay off your credit card because for some reason you just haven't gotten a job and can't figure out your finances. How long until you have reached a debt of 3000 so that's what's going to go in here for the amount. 3000 is what we want to know how long it takes to get to. The rest of it's still the same. You still start with $1,100. Although this time I'm leaving T, just like last time, in the exponent because I'm trying to find the time. Also, just like the last problem, I cannot take the log of both sides until I isolate that part of the exponential, a number to a power. So I'm going to start by dividing by 1,100. And 3,000 over 1,100, I'm just going to simplify that to 30 over 11. And I'll just give you kind of a gross decimal. Leave that as a fraction. Your calculator can deal with that work later. Okay. okay, now that we have a number to a power by itself, I can take the log of both sides. So I'm going to use the common log again because I don't see an E. So I have the log of 30 over 11 equals that exponent comes down in front. And then I'm going to divide by the log, right? Move the log first before you deal with what was in the exponent. So this is just like number six. I'm going to erase what these logs that this allows us to save some room. And the last thing you'll have to do is you're going to take all of this log and divide it by 12. So this is finally where you pull out your calculator. I'm going to take the log of 30 divided by 11, close your parentheses, divided by our log and then divide that answer by 12. So it says it's going to take you about 5.322 years. It's just a little bit longer. To reach a debt of $3,000, which really isn't that long. All right, that's number six and number seven. We're on to number eight. Okay, so number eight. Jim puts $1,000 in a bank account that pays 5.1% interest compounded continuously. After one year, he wants to know will he have enough money to buy a sound system that costs $1,055. If, because I don't know why he just cannot come up with that $55 this year. If another bank will pay Jim 5.5% interest compounded semi-annually, is that a better option? So basically, which bank should Jim go with? So let's do bank one. Bank one, um, we have an account that pays interest compounded continuously. That is your PERT formula. So we're going to put what information we know. So we know that Jim has $1,000. E is not a variable. It's a number. So it is E. The interest rate is 5.1. So that R is going to be 0 0.051. And the time is one year. So just times one. Let's figure out how much money Jim will have in that amount of time. So 1,000 E can be 0 0.051 times 1. 
And it turns out, oh, Jim will only have $1,052 and 32 cents. That is not enough money. Poor Jim, he can't buy his sound system. Let's see if bank two is any better for Jim or if he just needs to find a way to get 55 more dollars now. His second bank <coughs> gives him 5.5% interest compounded semi-annually. So remember, just like six and seven, semi-annually is this formula. So let's see, he still starts by putting $1,000 in. His interest rate is gone up to 5.5, so it's 0.055. Semi-annually means you take interest twice a year, and you'll take interest twice a year for one year. Now let's see how much money this bank will give Jim. $1,055.76. There we go. That is pretty much exactly what Jim wanted, and which is enough money. So the bank you should go with is bank two. All right, last one for this video. Oh, actually, I think I just wanted to go through number eight. Let's see. Nope, I wanted to go through number nine. So let's do number nine here. The population, now I looked up this, inform, or we looked up this information last year. The population in Delaware County was 109,000 people in the year 2000. That's before some of you were born, or right around when you were born. Actually, before all of you were born. None of you are 19 years old. They projected way back in 2000 that by the year 2025, there would be 230,000 people in, Ohio, in Delaware County. Assuming population is compounded continuously, right? Interest is like people are not, um, people are born all the time. Find the rate that the population is growing in Delaware County. So continuously compounded interest is your PERT formula. So what do we know? We need to know the R. So we should have information for everything else. We know that in 2000, we started with 109,000 people. We don't know the rate, but we know the time, which is 25 years later to 2025, and that population is 230,000. This is how that one's set up. <coughs> now, what we have to do is solve for R. I'm going to start by dividing by 109,000. And let's see, what's 230,000 divided by what? I'm just going to do 230 here. And that's not a pretty nice number, so let's turn that into a fraction. Two, oh, we got to leave it as 230 over 1. Okay. Or just 230 over 109 equals e to the, I'm going to change that to 25 r. Now, I have e to a power, and in order to take the log of both sides here, I need to take the natural log of both sides. So I'll take the natural log of this fraction equals that exponent moves down in front. And remember, the natural log of e is 1. So I can ignore that and jump right to dealing with the 25r. I can divide by 25. So what I have here is, I, I'm ready for my calculator. So I have the natural log of 320, 230, sorry. Am I writing this 320? No, 230. Okay, I'm not losing my mind. Divided by 109. I hit enter, and then divide that by 25. That is my R, 0 0.0298 seconds. Okay, I'll write it that way. So R is 0 0.0298 Seven. And I want to know what is that percentage rate. So move the decimal over twice, and that means population is growing at 2.987 percent. There you go. That's really not, not bad. All right, that's the end of this video. There's one more video for the last few questions on the review if you need it. Okay.